In Canada, the treatment for transplant ineligible newly diagnosed myeloma patients consists now, fairly recently, of a choice of two regimens. Traditionally, we've only had bortezomib-based triplets, uh, either VMP, which we have modified a bit to Cyborg-D, substituting cyclophosphamide for melphalan, but now we have funding across the country for lenalidomide and dexamethasone. So the myeloma database, the national database, is the result of the efforts of a, a whole team of people across the country. Really a lot of credit goes to Esther Masakan, who has developed our database at Princess Margaret. It's web-based and that platform was adopted by the other centers and we've actually migrated legacy data from about 2,500 patients from three other sites that had legacy data. So we have a group of patients that dates back 10 years and then there are 10 sites that are actively, prospectively entering new patients, including the original four. So this database, for the first time, was queried regarding the outcomes in Canada for transplant ineligible newly diagnosed myeloma patients, and that resulted in this abstract. What we are in the position of needing to look at is, is our benchmarks for a variety of reasons. We get access to these different regimens based on randomized controlled clinical trials. And the patients that can join those trials, that are accrued to those trials, are selected. They have to have usually good kidney function, good blood counts, and so they represent a generally healthier population that we see, than those that we see coming into our clinics. So there's a question in many people's minds, are those results um, um, recapitulated when we look at real world data. So this uh, question that we put to the database in this population uh, was able to look at the results in almost 850 patients that were treated with several regimens. Another question that we wanted to put to this database is in Canada there is a strong preference for giving bortezomib once a week rather than twice a week, which is its original registration dosing. And the reason we do that is because we have some of our own internal studies that suggest efficacy is preserved with once a week, and there's published data too, but there's much less neurologic toxicity. And to help our patients, we want to avoid neurotoxicity. It's quite miserable. But there hasn't been a great deal of published data to support that. And this is a bit of a long story, but there are newer regimens coming out in this population that add, for instance, a monoclonal antibody to bortezomib-based triplets, but they had to give bortezomib twice weekly. So we're interested, can we persuade them to let us do it our way once a week to help patients, but um, what data do we have to support that request? So um, benchmarking our results in Canada and looking at our way of giving bortezomib triplets uh, with once weekly bortezomib were two main um, um, questions that we wanted to address with this protocol. The bottom line was is when we looked at our four groups of patients, weekly VMP, weekly Cyborg-D, RD or lenalidomide index and um, a truncated doublet with bortezomib index, we found the results were basically identical to those in the published literature. Um, the bortezomib based triplets were fixed duration and lenalidomide index or RD is given continuously. So we found the response rates were not dramatically different in these groups but the progression-free survival, as expected from reports in the literature, was about a year and a half with the bortezomib triplets and was about two years with RD. So um, it was reassuring that the way we're delivering these regimens to our patients is getting quality results 
and that the way we have been giving bortezomib-based triplets is safer, easier for our patients, and gives identical results. So one of the very exciting parts of this is we can take this data to our funders as they look at a new regimen of VMP with daratumumab, and we can ask for weekly bortezomib, and I haven't said this yet, we also showed that our way of giving VMP was identical in outcome to Cyborg D, so we would prefer to be able to give Cyborg D and daratumumab. So it's a way of documenting the way we have intuitively done things in clinic to help patients and hopefully maintain outcomes, really achieved that result. And we will have a way through uh, the physician's input to the funders to submit that data. Whereas the manufacturer in trying to get approval and funding can't do that data in the same way.